get back to the way things ought to be where when you play smart and you play well, you stomp a team like Wake Forest, and that's what Florida State does. The win probability throughout the game never dipped below 90.2%, for example. Uh, and that was early when it was, uh, I think, 10 to 7. After that, it was never below 93%. So this was a rocking chair game if there ever was one. Obviously, the differential, for example, in yards, you can pick your stat that you want. All of them apply in the good column for Florida State. 508 yards for Florida State, uh, 210 for Wake. That is some old school domination. That's that stuff that we did to people in the 90s. That's what we did in 2013 to some teams where – you're hopeless if you're awake. You really had no reason uh, to be out there much of this game. You you kind of just were hoping to go home. <clears throat> well, you were home, but I mean, leave the stadium. You know, leave, get out. Don't want to be a part of this anymore. This is not good. Basically, the only offense Wake had was one long run and a couple of really suspect penalties against Florida State. Other than that, they did nothing. Florida State now sits as an overwhelming favorite to win the ACC, of course, and most of us in this fan base see it as a step along the way towards um, making the college football playoff and perhaps having an opportunity to win a national title. And to that point, the committee will announce their CFP rating for the first time this year, tomorrow night. Uh, if I were a one-man committee, Tom, uh, this would be my top 10. I'd have Georgia, Michigan, Florida State, Ohio State, Washington, Oregon, Alabama, Oklahoma, Texas, Ole Miss. Ole Miss's lone loss was to Bama on the road 24 to 10, so I have to put him in there at top 10. That's it. Um, this was a weekend for OU to take it on down the road, which was nice. Others cemented their take it on down the road status, like North Carolina just wanted you to be sure. They wanted you to know we are we do not matter. In case you thought we still – we do not matter at all. How about 600 yards for Georgia Tech? Well, 22 points in the fourth quarter hurt your feelings. I mean, sweet Jesus, 600 yards. Oh, I'll get to them in a minute. Utah and Oregon State, thanks for playing. It's been real. Take it on down the road. Sorry, Whittingham, I bet against you I won. I had to. Didn't think that'd be much of a game. It wasn't. So that's my top 10. But my guess as to what the committee will do looks like this. I think they'll go Georgia, Ohio State, Michigan, Florida State, Washington coming in at five, just out, just behind Florida State. Now, of those teams, if you want to have a larger conversation just for a second, uh, I like our chances against Ohio State. I think we'd beat Ohio State. I don't like our chances against Georgia. I think FSU is a coin toss with Michigan at this point because, and this is important, the Knowles would have the services of six foot five, 340-pound Daryl Jackson in the playoff, and that is a big, big deal. You give me Jackson, Farmer, and Fist to go with Verse and Peyton, and we can go to war. I can I can play some defense now. I can I can stop the run game and get you out of what you want to do. The problem, of course, is on the other side. Our offensive line wouldn't block those teams. But that's where you need Mike, who can be a magician with these game plans, and Jordan Travis, especially Jordan Travis, the runner, to change the math. And in a one-off, you create enough offense – that gets you to the fourth quarter and you got a chance to win those games. Let's hope we're talking about it. Let's hope we're having that conversation. I got ahead of myself, uh, but you, you know, let's hope that that's some sort of scenario that we're talking about. Now the game itself, for those of you wondering scrimmage plays, not counting garbage time and special team stuff, 66 scrimmage plays, 29 rush attempts for Florida state. And in, in that, it kind of encapsulates how weird the team is because they were good and efficient on the ground, uh, but they weren't great. And what I mean by that is you have 29 rush attempts, 16 of those went for two yards or less. <laughs> just what we do every week. They're just uh, like 20 carries in a game will just go nowhere. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, there's 12 yards. Okay, that was good. And you set something else up. It's just a strange existence on the ground for us right now. I thought the offensive line and pass protection, great. Best they've been. Perhaps this year. Probably the best they've been since the LSU game. They were outstanding that night. Yeah, I yeah. think I think that's the best they've played in pass pro since the LSU game, is what I would say. And Florida State always finds ways to overcome whatever weaknesses they seem to have. And you can do that when your quarterback is awesome. And by the way, he was awesome as in best game he's played since the second half of LSU. He was fantastic in this football game. Jordan Travis was the best version of of Jordan Travis in this game. He's been a, he's been a real good player all year long, 
But this was the kind of guy we thought we'd see every week, and it was on display in this game. He did a very, very good job. Uh, obviously, when you think about this game, you got big plays. You always have big plays, none bigger than the boom, bitch, get out the way screen to trade uh, Benson, who is um, something that uh, you don't want a piece of with that kind of speed. I mean, can you imagine being that poor safety or those poor corners trying to come across the field? It's such a beautifully designed play. Now, I could watch it 15 times, not just because Trey Benson, when at full tilt, is something to behold, but because of the play design with the motion going to the right, then you roll him back around, you peel your lineman to get out there in front, and, it's, and he's patient, and it's perfect. It's perfect. The screen game has come into play now, and you're watching them really hit on these screens. This is two weeks in a row where they're really able to do this, and some of that early in the year was a little off. The timing was a little off, but they've got it now, and it helps negate some of the short yardage rush problems that you have. So it's a lot of fun to watch them incorporate this now and do it so well. Um, that play obviously goes 80 yards, and it was all she wrote at that point. It's uh, And that brings me to another point. Mike Norvell is really in his element. He is so good as a play caller and a play designer. Uh, the, the kind of fun and games they have with setting things up. I love charting. I know you do this because you do the post game. But you, you chart along with the game, and you can see, like I put a little star by plays that I know are set up plays where I'll go, oh, I know what they're going to run off of this, or I'll guess it. I'll say, here's what I think, given his affinity for this, this, and this. I'll say, Here, here's what they're going to run off of that the next time they're in this formation. And maybe it's not always right, but it's something close, or it's the second time or the third time, and then all of a sudden you're like, aha, gotcha. And it's beautiful to watch. Uh, he's – as good as there is as an offensive play caller, I, I I really, you guys know I wouldn't tell you this if I didn't think it. He's really, really, really good. Uh, Florida State averaged 10.32 yards per drop back. Well, that'll hurt your feelings if you're Wake Forest. Sweet Jesus. By comparison, if you want to know, Wake Forest averaged a paltry 3.9 per drop back. Again, that's, as I say, will uh, hurt your feelings. The defense, outside of the one long run, was awesome again. Uh, Wake was dominated in every way, which is what we thought would happen. Their third down success rate was 18%. Mm, 18%, you don't say, for Wake Forest. Here's the stat of the day. They ran the ball 44 of their 65 scrimmage plays, Wake Forest did. Now, we said they wanted to run the ball. I guess that they would try to run it more than 40 times. That's how they play football at Wake these days. That's how they have to try to play football because they got to shorten the games. So listen to this. They ran the ball 44 of their 65 scrimmage plays. Of those 44 rushes for Wake Forest, 41 of them went for two yards or less. <laughs> that is men playing with children. I mean, that is a bunch of grown-ups, like in their costumes, like you see the mascot games, just bitch slapping children all over the field during the exhibition. That's what Wake Forest had happened to them on Saturday, was grown-ups just went and ended the play. Sometimes it was so violent, the refs just decided to throw a flag because it's violent. There's like, oh, I don't know. It just seems unfair. I'm going to throw it. It's just mean. But that's crazy. 41 of the 44 rushes for two yards or less. If you take away the one long run, and you can't, and you got to stop having busts like that. We have one every game. But if you take away that run, holy moly, now, now we're, now we're talking about you run the ball 43 times for no yards. <laughs> Boy, that's a lot of times to attempt to run and get no yards. So, obviously, you get a come get you some game from the defense. Uh, what they finally chart this? Was it six sacks or five? Six. Yeah, it's six. I thought it was six, and two of those were by verse, of course. You get double-digit tackles for loss. and. You really cannot ask for anything more other than, yeah, I mean, I guess if we're going to point out anything that's negative the third quarter, but that was aided by some nonsense calls. But I, I, I had no real problem. I mean, this is the first game that they've played where I kind of just, 
you know, at halftime, I almost sent you a picture of a rocking chair and I got sidetracked doing something else. I think I was grilling still. And I uh, just, I, the game was over. It was over at halftime. Yeah, this third quarter was not the same as the Boston College no, third quarter. No, no, not no, even not, close. No, no, um, no. You know, they, they have a chance to go for two and get it to a two score game, but you know, they aired out everything they had. Dave Clawson told you what he thought about their chances of a rally with their first drive getting down into our territory yeah. and kicking and kicking in a 34 to 7 game to make it 34 to 10. So you knew how much it was over in his mind and everybody's mind. We were substituting, doing our thing in that regard as well, getting some guys' snaps. This was uh, an awesome game. Yeah. This was, it, there was nothing really to worry about. Even that near pick on the first drive it's from Jordan, yeah. the dude falls down. They yeah. didn't show them the broadcast, but that's why we have people up there. I saw on our Twitter sphere that yeah. Dion just fell. Yeah, he fell down. You could see it on the, on one of the replays. He falls down, yeah. So, again, this is just everything you wanted to see, you got to see. Layers to the offense, completions short, completions over the middle of the field, completions at medium depth, deep shots, Keon Coleman, the variety of what he brings to the table, special teams showed up. Deuce Span looks shot out of a cannon now every time he returns a kick. We Every single time. Permanently be the guy. We don't need to really deal with anybody else back I there. tend to agree. And even though I was angry when he was returning it from eight yards deep, I'm not so sure that's a bad idea anymore. If you're going to get up to that top speed, I wonder what it is. It's got to be north of 21. Has to be. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, if you're going to – depends on the gun. Sometimes they say some pretty ridiculous things that I don't buy. They'll say yeah, somebody said 23. Somebody said 23 for Trey Benson. I'm not. Come on. No. He ain't running 23 miles per hour. But anyhow, it's still 21, 22, certainly in the realm of possibility. But for yes, and this is where on that play, you know, there are guys when they're moving, you can see it on a TV screen. Like when Dalvin ran in the open oh, field. Oh, yeah. You felt that even if you weren't in the building. There was a you suddenness to it. it. Yeah. Trey doesn't look like he's moving all that fast. I think it's because of the upright nature of how he runs. He's a big, big guy. And he holds the ball up high. It just doesn't look like he can be motoring. But they showed that one replay of the 80-yard touchdown from the end zone. And it, as you he was coming towards really it. You really see it then. And that's when you, you almost feel a little fear. You well, go, look oh at his God. eyes. And, and that's what I mean. When you see his face and you realize that if you're a defensive back, it's hard enough as a linebacker. Yeah. But if you're a defensive back or a safety and you see that dude get to the second level relatively untouched, you got a problem on your hands. Well, and you got to make a business decision. It's, you know, it's something we saw even his first year, you know, when, when he gets to camp and he's full speed, you can hear him running by you. The, as oh, he's running by. We talked about it, yeah. And you and you see the size, and, and that just, it creates a feeling of, oh, man, who wants to mess with that guy? But it just doesn't translate to television all that well. I'm glad, finally, there was an appreciation for that. That one camera angle showed it. But he was 150 yards from scrimmage this week, which was great. He was our leading receiver at 100 yards. Yeah, yeah. pretty cool as well. But then Keon does what Keon does. You know, this is shorthanded in the receiving core. You still dominated in the passing game. Good thing, too, when you look at uh, the game plan, and I want to get more into this big picture stuff. I've been kind of hoping that we would get to a place where we were completely comfortable and beginning games by spreading you out and throwing the football. Well, here you go. Uh, I think that's who they are. I think it's what they have to do. I think that's the that's when they're their most efficient and best selves. Because when you do that and you get people out of the box and you spread people out, now we hit you with the run. And, and this is where it becomes much more efficient. They are not efficient in obvious rundowns and the whole world knows they're running. They're not good at it. They don't, they don't, they're not an overpowering offensive line. So you got to pass to run. And you've got more than enough weapons to pass the run and a ridiculously suave, aged, experienced quarterback who's who's on, you know, obviously the synergy between he and Keon and the other receivers, very good. Uh, Jordan Travis's best throw of the year was made in this game. Yep. And it's the pass to Morlock. And if you watch it again and again and again, it's an elite NFL throw. He doesn't always do that. He did on Saturday. That throw is as good a throw as you'll ever see. And the important thing to stress here, now that everybody has seen it and everybody can appreciate what that was, in camp, he didn't just do that once or twice. Right. He did it consistently in camp. You know, the one day inside the stadium with about a week to go before the season began, or at least the LSU preparations, he made four of those throws on that particular yeah. night. And so when we were talking about Jordan taking that next step to being an elite college football player in every facet of the game at the position with running and throwing the football. It's because we saw throws like that. The one I'll remember probably outside of the third down conversion he had against LSU, the most impactful play that Winston Wright made this year was a throw anticipatory 
in the slot. It was third and forever against the first-team Florida State defense, and it was just like that. And then he followed it with one to Keon Coleman on the sideline. That was just like the throw to, to Morlock. If he's unlocking something extra here, this is starting to get scary. And it's what we've been well, talking about the whole time is they have moments of inconsistency and they're dropping 40 a week. Well, now look at them. If this is who Jordan Travis is going to be down the stretch, buddy, he will be in New York. They, yeah, won't, he'll, he'll they won't be able the, to ignore it. He'll get to the top four and have a chance there because um, he'll keep putting up big numbers here. He's got some big games coming up. He's got opportunities here to really do – uh, more uh, good work as we just saw here. I, I think, Tom, really it's as simple as this. And I I mean, I would like to talk to Tony Tokars about this, who I, I, I like talking to anyhow. Um, I never played quarterback, obviously played football and watched a ton of football. It seems to me that when Jordan is throwing those kinds of passes, the one that we're describing to Morlock, for example, and the ones you were talking about that we witnessed in practice, the only difference is when he is, is, is his footwork. Typically it's just a matter of technique. When he's technically sound, he throws a really good football when he's not, when he gets a little lazy with his footwork, it's a little lazy and falls back on throws that may have been born out of trying to survive an injury. Uh, but when he does those things, it sails on him. You watch it. It sails on him. He missed, he, he missed one in this game where it sailed on him. That's typically uh, his miss it is high. And and it's he had the one on the quick game that he was going to try to get it out to uh, Keon Coleman early in the game, um, which later on he hit when we and he scored. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he recognized the defensive inefficiency there. He's like, oh, that's a safety on him. Okay, go get the ball out. And then he did, but he airmailed it. And that is that's just usually footwork. Um, that's what I think. So it would be interesting. I, Tony may tell me something different, but I, I'll ask him because I think it's fascinating because that is in there when he's being technically sound he yeah. can be very very good uh some big numbers to look at with Florida State and where they what they've become and who they are and where that sits uh within the top 20 top 10 really probably what we're more concerned about where does Florida State rank in all of the advanced metrics and what kind of team are they at this point now you know the one problem with these is that of course uh, you can get adjusted for uh, opponent you can get adjusted for weather and rain and all the other stuff uh, but you know, our, te- our schedule is not Texas's schedule. It's not Oklahoma's schedule. It's not Michigan's schedule. not Ohio State's schedule. So you really do have to kind of take these numbers and say, okay, well, I'll extrapolate this from that and maybe understand that uh, this doesn't mean as much, but this maybe means more because it's against a better caliber team. Or And we'll talk about some of those numbers because I think Florida State sits really nice on a night before the committee is going to sit down and kind of talk about what these teams' resumes mean. And I think if you do that, there's no way Florida State's not a top four team. It's impossible. It's really not possible to, to exclude Florida State from the top four if you take every possible metric, and that includes watching the games. It's impossible to rank them outside the top four. I don't think they will be ranked outside the top four. I agree with you, but it's also impossible to put them outside the top three, and you probably should put them in the top two based upon accomplishments to this point. The problem is the committee doesn't like changing things drastically week to week with more information. So once you start somewhere, it's hard to move you off that spot. But if you're talking about resume comparison and balance, and, and I know you're going to get into the numbers yeah, in a I was moment. Yeah, we can get into these. It's, it's a hard case to make to put Florida State outside the top three, and they probably should be top two. I have met three, uh, but I but I can... I can make an argument for two. I can make an argument for one. Uh, and I, you know, but I can't make an argument for anything worse than four. And I really can't even get there. You saw I had them at three. So that's, I think that's what they are. Jeff Cambridge, 93, three real talk radio, war chant TV. What I was told was bone on bone. I was going to have to have knee replacement and I do not like surgery. Desperate to avoid surgery. Julie decided to check out QC kinetics, non-surgical regenerative treatments. My daughter actually works in a Chapel Hill, North Carolina lab. And I sent her all of the information that I was given. And she's like, oh, mom, this is for you. I've heard great things about this. She's like, you need to try it before ever doing surgery. Julie started the QC kinetics, natural biologic treatments right in the office using her own healing properties to help restore her damaged tissue. I know my daughter was right. Yeah, It's nice when you've got that um, person you can go to who might have a little bit more information, especially on the science of it. QC Kinetics, it's life-changing. Find out if you're a good candidate. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. 
Hi, Chris Kraft for Kraft Nissan. Okay, it just keeps getting better. In the last two months, we've sold a record number of Titan pickup trucks. So we asked Nissan to extend our finance offer, and they did. So in October, you can still get 0% for 60 months on the popular Nissan Titan pickup. Need more reasons? How about 8,000 reasons? Yes, you can get up to $8,000 off your purchase of a new Titan truck. Plus, you get America's best warranty, five years, 100,000 miles, bumper to bumper. And the accolades keep coming. Motor Trend Magazine just voted 2023 Rogue as the number one new compact SUV in America. And this month, 0% interest is available on Rogue's platinum trim level. Cars.com listed the best used cars on the market, and they like Nissan Rogue in the compact SUV category. And in the midsize SUV category, it was Nissan Murano. Whether it's new or used, car, truck, or SUV, come to Kraft Nissan. Discover why Tallahassee is a Nissan town. Kraft Nissan on Mayhem Drive in Tallahassee. Orthopedic pain and injury deserves effective treatment options now, so you feel better fast. Whether you have joint pain that won't subside or an urgent orthopedic injury, we are the specialists to get you back on your feet. And there's only one thing better than fast care, expert care. We believe you deserve both. TOC, only experts. Learn more at teamtoc.com. There's no doubt that buying a home can feel overwhelming, especially if it's your first home. You're worried about location, school zones, square footage, inspections, insurance, loan approvals, interest rates, and of course the price. Buying a home can be the most significant investment you've ever made. But there's good news. You have our friends at Legendary Home Loans, and they're on your side and in your corner. They're going to go to bat for you. Shannon Young from Legendary Home Loans can help first-time home buyers get up to $25,000 for your down payment. For first responders, veterans, teachers, military, and healthcare workers, and that's not all, Shannon is an expert navigator of the home loan terrain, and you can trust that he's going to get you the most competitive interest rates and guide you through the process every step of the way. Plus, Shannon will also get your closing costs reduced. It's the Hometown Heroes Program at Legendary Home Loans. Give them a call today, 844-FSU-LOAN. That's 844-FSU-LOAN. Or go to FSUHomeLoans.com and ask for Shannon Young. NMLS number 227146. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. The post-college football ratings uh, get together as a staff on War Chant. It'll be going live as they go as well. Oh, live reaction show. Okay, yeah, yeah. 7 p.m. tomorrow. I know it's Halloween, and uh, that may not work for everybody, but you can always go back and watch it, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll give our reaction. I think we're going to be all right. The only concern that I would have is if we are ranked outside that top five, top four, excuse me, I think that's the only thing that matters is that you're in the top four because you're controlling your own destiny here. And if you went out, you're going, there would be no reason for them to be able to drop you. I also think this is all going to get worked out because of how many tough games Washington still has and the way that they're banged up right now on that offensive line. They can't really move the ball that well. Come on, Dan Lanning, just kick those field goals a couple of weeks ago. Actually, that would be a bigger problem for us. Yeah, they found a way to lose that ball game. Yeah, Oregon's good. Oregon's a yeah. problem. Like you yeah. know, I, that Oregon win was a significant win over the weekend to go in there and do. Nobody does that, and they just manhandled Utah. That's a good win. 
if they hadn't butchered the end of the Washington game, they would be, yeah. uh, and they would, we'd be in trouble there. That'd Last be possession, first half, first possession, second half. Kick it, my man. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. Um, really quick, I'll get into some of these numbers here in a minute. But uh, I want I want to draw your attention to something here. And if you're interested in giving the gift of education, the gift of a scholarship, then you'll want to listen up. The Giovanni Vetrano Foundation, a nonprofit organization near and dear to us here on the Jeff Cameron Show, is holding its 2023 Geo Cup this week in Tallahassee. The event is a showcase, uh, showcase excuse me, of the elite soccer programs in the Tallahassee area. It also serves as the most important week of fundraising in honor of Giovanni Vetrano, who tragically died two years ago this November. I don't know how two years has gone by. That's amazing. Gio's father, he's our friend, Ron Vetrano. Uh, worked with him and known him many, many years. And he created this scholarship fund to be awarded annually to three high school student athletes in our community. Three scholarships help honor Giovanni's spirit. This week through November the 4th, thanks to an anonymous donor, all donations to the GV scholarship will be doubled. Please consider the power of what you can do to help young student athletes in their college journey. If you wish to learn more and support the Giovanni Vetrano Foundation, visit gvscholarship.org today. That is gvscholarship.org. Go there today and check it out and learn more about it. How about that? Donations are going to be doubled. Good stuff. Thanks to whoever is doing that as well. And thanks to all of you in advance uh, before you go and, and, and donate there gvscholarship.org. All right, back to Florida State here. I was mentioning before the break, Tom and I were talking a lot about this team and where do they rank. And, you know, we're starting to pay attention because the Dog and Pony show starts tomorrow. And, you know, we'll see what they do. Now, if they want to make a statement, they would rank Michigan fifth. If they want to make a statement, sometimes they do that. Sometimes the college football playoff committee does that. C2014. Well, but you could do that here and be justified. That's a weak schedule. I would say, well, it's not just an opinion. It is the weakest schedule of the bunch. It's not close. It's in the hundreds. It's not very good at all. Now, do I think Michigan is a top four team? I do. But if they're just going to do the week-to-week, who have you played, who have you beaten, what's your resume telling me right now? Well, then I would tell you that uh, Washington has to be ahead of them. They've got a more significant win. And I would tell you certainly we do, and Ohio State does at this point. You would, ju- you would do that with all of the teams that we're having this conversation about. And uh, they could do that. They could do that. Uh, I don't really care about how they do this as long as what they do do is put Florida State in the top four. And Florida State's, if you want to look at, for example, offensive yards per play, Florida State is 13th in the country. Uh, They're eighth in points per drive. So whether it's yards or points, whatever metric you like most, you can go with any number you want. I mean, I can keep doing this. They're top 20 in all of them. For offense. Defensively is where they've gotten a lot better. And if you look at defensive points per drive, Florida State's number 11 in the country. So you can look at stop rate. You can look at points per drive. I mean, that's a pretty easy statistic to get your head around, right? Like how many points per drive do you give up? You know, and that's, again, that factors everything non-garbage time. Okay, so they do keep into account that you may have your third strings in in a 50 point game or a 40 point game and you give up a touchdown so that they don't incorporate that right that doesn't count so it's a pretty good metric because it's not counting your third string giving up a bomb to lsu with a minute to you know it's like oh they weren't even trying correct but you could also look at uh, yards per play you might be surprised to learn that florida state is 23rd in the country in that metric so and rising fast. Yeah. So quite frankly, if you are, you want a balanced team, you want a team that you say, okay, what is it? How do I define it? Where do they fit compared to all the teams playing football in the country? Well, golly, if, I, if I'm if i looking at points and yards, <laughs> obviously wins. <laughs> I've got an 8-0. 
I've got a top 20 uh, in almost every meaningful category that, that, that assesses what a football team is. It's hard to then say, well, yeah, but I don't like them. I'm going to put them at seven. You couldn't do it. You really can't do it. So I don't think that Florida State is going to get burned tomorrow night. I think Florida State will be sitting comfortably within that top four. And then from there, it's just a matter of, do you take advantage of what lays before you? Florida State, I said it before, is an overwhelming favorite to win the ACC. If you're looking statistically, Conley put this out too. I mean, it's over 80% now at this point that Florida State will be playing for and likely to win the ACC championship. If you if you get this win on Saturday against Pitt, I mean, everybody get your hotel room ready to go in Charlotte. Yeah, get it now. I mean, well, I agree, Tom, but I'm saying if you're really cautious <laughs> and you just aren't sure, well, this will do it. This will punch the ticket. So get ready to have fun. It should be a good time. Um, Florida State is in a enviable position. And when you look around and you see all – sorts of teams falling on their face and stumbling with opportunity and it presents itself. You, you get excited. Um, I don't know what this pit team is going to be this Saturday. I, it's almost impossible to tell. I think my guess is, is you got one of two scenarios playing out here. Uh, a team that has just quit on their head coach and hates Pat Narduzzi. Uh, there seem to be some indicators that they have real problems. Players calling him out on Twitter after the game this weekend in which they got blown out. I hope you had my Notre Dame pick, everybody. I gave the 20 and a half and said I thought they could shut him out. I gave up seven, 58 to seven. But Pitt's in trouble. They don't have good players. Uh, and their head coach doesn't like his players, and he tells them that via the press and then tries to save it at the very end by saying, ultimately it's on me. Well, man, you just spent 15 minutes telling everybody how much you hate your players. That ain't going to work. And I like Narduzzi. I like him a lot, but he, he made a mistake and that's born out of frustration. No doubt. Can we say that the best interviews that you get at ACC kickoff are a kiss of death for that coach? It seems that way. Yeah. It Hopefully seems that way with Mario that continues as well. Well, I hope, I hope that was a good interview too. Yeah, it was a good interview. Um, but yeah, Narduzzi was a fun interview to have. And I, everybody in the ACC who covers him loves him. I mean, he's a fun guy. He's a no nonsense guy. He's been a really good coach in his career, really good. And that was kind of out of left field, that mistake there. That is pure frustration. And uh, anyhow, the point would be when you call your players out like that and then they call you out publicly on social media forums throughout the rest of the day. Well, that's not good. I'd say we're at an impasse. we got a bit of a problem here. Coach doesn't like players. Players don't like coach. And obviously the play on the field this past weekend suggested they weren't exactly giving it their all. Now, Notre Dame was going to win that game. They were always going to win that game, but they shouldn't have won it 58 to seven. That is an indication of a quit. That is not unlike just for, a trip down memory lane, the way we looked against Boston College the one night and uh, Jimbo first admitted we quit and then went back and lied and said that he didn't say that and that he didn't quit. But he admitted to me, he quit on Sunday. They quit on that Sunday, if you recall the interview. And we were sitting around watching that game and we had players on the sideline laughing while we were on the wrong end of 35 to nothing or whatever the hell it was. And uh, I remember thinking, well, this, mm, I don't know that you recover from this. You know, that's the hard part. Now, as 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 a team with a lot to lose and uh, let's say a fan of a team with a lot to lose if uh if, if you slip up along the way you kind of guard yourself you get your dukes up right because you think well maybe it works the other way maybe they have a come to jesus at pit and he fires them up after falling on the sword and crying in the locker room and telling him how much he loves them and that it was just a weakness moment and that he's so sorry and now let's show the world what we are I don't know. Maybe you get that version of Pitt on Saturday. It may not matter, but you may get that version that's fired up and ready to play Saturday afternoon and get, uh, you know, we get their best shot, which I still don't think is good enough to beat us. But if you're playing poorly, you don't match intensity, who knows? But it's it's just hard to find a way for Pitt to be in this game midway through the third quarter. It's, it's hard to find a path at this point. It's hard to argue against an expectation that we are going to be dominant 
in most of our games the rest of the way. It's just the, the way that this team is playing together, all phases. Like the worst part of our game on Saturday was the kicking game. You missed the field goal chip shot. The punting game wasn't that great. You had the one down inside the two-yard line, was which awesome, was exceptional, yeah. but Master didn't have a great day. First bad weekend of the year for uh, this, the special teams as far as offensively kicking. You as know, far as yeah, kicking yeah. it goes, yeah, kicking and punting. But you covered well, you returned well. And the offense and the defense, I mean, it's just, it feels to me like a machine is really starting to hum. Yeah, the only the only hindrance, Tom, to that, it, for me being all on board with that, and they overcome it most days, and they will against most of the teams that they play that are of this caliber, is that that is not an elite offensive line. And they find ways anyhow, and that really helps that you have a very good offensive coordinator, a very good play-calling head coach, and a really, really talented quarterback who can get out of harm's way. So you have a lot of things that help offset that weakness. Um, it's just never going to be uh, a, a plus plus offensive line as currently constructed. So that is, that'll be what you have to overcome. I'm not dwelling on it. It'll be what you have to overcome when you play the big boys. But I will tell you, certainly you watch now, they are easily able to get past some of those inefficiencies up front and put up big numbers and create offense. And that's because they're really good at what they do and they have a ton of experience and they have game changers, both at tight end and at wide receiver. Now they did all of this while missing several guys that are key to what you're trying to do offensively, including Johnny Wilson, obviously. So that tells you just how locked in they are right now to your point. And it certainly tells you that when they're facing a 66th ranked team, SP plus Wake Forest, they're going to, house that ass that's what they're going to do um and that's what they did and i'd like to think that's what happens here as well uh it probably does i just can't i, I just don't see a way on a monday that we sit here and think like can can that be a game in the second half I, it's football i mean weird things happen but probably not well the other thing is it's a noon kick on the road that we just went through there's a lot of Knowles fans there and they were fantastic well, I thought it was a 330 kick no, no I'm sorry uh, where we're coming from like, oh oh we get the way yes the situation that we just arrived into yeah there might be some bad blood there because you're tired of losing to wake let's right the wrong and it seems like that was a message amongst the team itself that they wanted to do that but it's still Wake Forest and Winston-Salem at noon well the good news is that stadium was filled with Knowles it was and they did a fantastic <laughs> job but you get off the bus and you're coming for blood out the gate and you could feel that. Yeah. So I just, I, that's another sign to me that you, you did it against Virginia tech. You started fast. Syracuse was never a game. And those are two lackluster environments. When you're talking about the opponent inspiring you to do something. And we found it in our own way to come out and play well out the gate. I just, these are good indicators that you're going to kick off at three 30 on the road for a, again, a lackluster environment, unless our fans can help it along a little bit and you're going to be ready. That's, I don't think we're going to be snoozing at any point for the rest of the season, which is really good because you're just trying to check boxes of where could we lose a football game. It won't be because we're not prepared or not motivated. Uh, depending on what you look at, conference odds for Florida State, 86% chance that they win the ACC at this point. Um, projecting competition, Florida State's margin of victory, what they'll be favored by, et cetera. Louisville's next at 11%. Miami's at 2%, followed by Virginia Tech, 0.7%. But they're not completely dead. They're not. Hey, they got a heads up with Louisville this weekend. Yeah, they'll lose that game, and that'll be that. So <laughs> we'll be done talking about it. But maybe they won't. Maybe they won't. I will tell you, you kind of need Louisville to win it. Yeah, not insignificant tomorrow night is Louisville's position in the top 25. Yeah. Uh, you know, look, I love that we're 6-0 and in the ACC and pretty much Scott free headed to the ACC championship at this point. Uh, Louisville's 4-1 and in conference. Uh, they are um, a top 20 to 35-ish team. And depends on, again, what metrics you want to look at there. But that's where they kind of sit currently. Um, 24th, 25th, somewhere in there. But if they went out on the strength of having one loss they would probably be top 15 at the time that we would play them. You've got to give, by the way, Virginia Tech and that coaching staff a lot of credit. Mm -hmm. uh, they were absolutely dead in the water, terrible, and then turned it all around on our three and one in the ACC. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's bizarre. Hey, that pit team summoned the ability to beat Louisville. So you never know. That's also at three 30 this weekend is Louisville, Virginia Tech. The, 
the final thing on this real quick. I, I notice it all the time. You certainly see this on social media outlets and you see it on message boards. It's that some football fans, not all, not all, but some football fans really don't get that it's not the transitive property, guys. It's not how football works. I see so many people like, well, I don't understand how they could beat this team and lose to that team. This this is crazy. And it's not. It's football. You watch football. This is what happens all the time. Spots matter. When you play somebody, what time of year? Weather matters. Injury luck matters. All this stuff plays into how a team could beat another team and then lose to a team that lost to that team by 50. It's, it's right. It happens all the time. So that's what makes Florida State being 8-0 very, very impressive is that you see a lot of people stub their toe or a lot of people have moments. Now, we had one against Boston College. That, that was the fright game. That's the game where you go, oh, man, that was something. But even that BC team has turned it around now and is probably going to go to a bowl game. So they're not the dregs of the earth as they looked on the day that we played them in Chestnut Hill. Um, but I, you know, this weekend, once again, you just kind of flip around, flip around, and you go, well, see, that's not stunning that Oklahoma just lost to Kansas, I guess. You know, when you see that, and then you think and you the bean machine. Yeah, you keep you you look around and you're like, well, this is pretty amazing. Duke got thumped. That's a terrible spot for Duke. We knew it going in. I said, oh, man, I kind of feel for this Duke team. They just left it all on the field here, did everything in their power to try to get that win, had the lead in the second half. You know, he must have felt good about the chips to the middle of the table. The problem is they didn't get the win. They got beat going away. They got worn out, and then now they got that game. Well, and they got their quarterback hurt even more. And if you had saved him, I think that game this past weekend looks a lot different. Maybe. A I, limited Leonard is, is a huge difference. Yeah, he's going to be limited either way. I, I wouldn't have played him either, but I, I think – I don't know that he's going to not be limited the rest of the way. I think they're kind of screwed now. I might think score are. more than zero. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. All they do is run the ball, man. It's uh, it's a tough deal. They're tough. I like them. They're physical, and they, he's a great coach, but – that's a that's a tough. He's got to get some receivers in there. Got to get some people. He's got to he's got to find a way. Should be interesting when they play North Carolina to see who loses their third game in conference. Man, it'll be fun to watch North Carolina uh, the rest of the way because this has the makings of a oh we blew it we blew it we, we it's all out there. We're frauds. What do we do? We could just stop playing. Same you as it could. ever was. You could. It's Jeff Cameron Show ninety three three Real Talk Radio War Chat TV. Your local news now. A woman has died after being shot Saturday morning in Tallahassee. Authorities said it happened around 10 a.m. in the 600 block of Palm Beach Street. The woman was taken to the hospital but died from her injuries. Her name has not been released. The shooting happened near FAMU's campus just hours after homecoming break got underway at 8 a.m. The incident is believed to be isolated and unrelated to the parade and those that attended. Tallahassee police say they've made an arrest in connection to the shooting. They arrested 22 year old Alquedrick Smith for the crime. They also found several guns, including an illegal fully automatic weapon during a search of Smith's home. TBD says the victim and Smith knew each other. Smith is now facing charges of murder, possession of a firearm by delinquent, and possession of a fully automatic or short-barreled firearm. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 local news update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Travley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Mainly clear this afternoon with a high of 85. Winds out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows dip down to about 59. Highs level off around 76. Tomorrow, sunshine mixed with clouds at times. Dry and turning cooler Wednesday and Thursday with highs from the low 60s to the upper 60s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 82. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF. Your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. 
So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpa's, the food is always good. I mean, mm -hmm. everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that a, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, Jeez. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that uh, that you could share with us here? Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. Having fun with uh, Femrau here, doing projections for uh, the rest of the way uh, for Florida State. FPI projects that Miami is an 80% chance to win over Florida State. No, on, no, they're not. Uh uh. So this is funny. This, yeah, no, this likes us a lot, as it should. Welcome to the party, pal. And I know it's his model, it's not him. No. And this is femoral. This is just yeah. The, this yeah, is, this yeah. is the FBI. This is yeah. It's not Connolly. Mm. But you can watch. You can look at everything from points per drive, available yards, yards per play. You can. I mean, any of the they have all of this in the data. And it's so fun to do because, like, you can compare and contrast Florida State and say Ohio State, or Florida State and Michigan, and it's you know it's it's good. It's you can kind of get a sense of what the computer thinks would happen. Obviously, they play the games, and. You know, it's you can look for neutral site. You can look for if we played there, if they played here. That's it's just fun to do that. Uh, you know, I the team you least want to play. If you if you're looking at the playoff and you say we make the playoff of the teams you think that are going to be in the playoff, who's the team you least want to play? Georgia yeah, with easily. Bowers. Yeah, well, and I just Georgia period. Georgia without Bowers. Mm. It's a little bit different. I want to see a little bit more out of the Big Ten and what it really is, those two teams. But Georgia with Bowers, yeah, no thanks. I'll pass. Yeah, I, I'll pass too. I'll I'll pass. I'll, that's still number one even without Bowers. I don't want to play him. I don't know that that victory over Florida is that impressive. I mean, it, they did what they were supposed to do, yeah, just like we they, did. They beat the bejesus out of Florida. That wasn't competitive football. Competitive just like football we did game. this weekend, though. I mean, I mean, no, it, no. I, Florida's I, comeback I, against South Carolina to me was never that impressive because South Carolina is just cheeks and then some. I agree, but we would say Florida has better players than Wake Forest on offense. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah they've got better players than Wake Forest. So, I um, I, I just say that I that team when they decide to play. See, I, I I have been of the mindset that Georgia hadn't cared to play, and when they have twice, they beat the heck out of people. Uh, that was a good catch. That was close. That was real close. That was real close. But they, I mean, they, you see it when they care to play, you're like, Oh yeah, still bigger, stronger, faster than everybody else out there. That's, that's a problem. And that's what happens when you stockpile recruiting classes like they have. That's where that is. That's where we're trying to go. That's where we're trying to get to. When you stockpile five star after five star, top five class after top five class, this is what you have. But we have seen a more talented offense than Georgia this year, and we handled it. Once we understood what was happening to us, we did handle them in a yeah. monumental way. Yeah, my my uh my worry is less about their offense and more about what their defense would do to our offensive line. And I, I have a problem with that. If you play quick game and spread it out, though, you you're mitigate have that to. advantage. You're going to have to. And that's why you have a chance. That's why yeah. you have a shot. Because you've got a veteran player like Jordan, and you can spread them out. And you've got a very good play caller in Mike Norvell. And you've got real weapons in the form of Keon Coleman, Johnny Wilson, Jaheim Bell. You, I mean, you got guys. For the record, I think the difference here on either side of the glass is I am – unafraid for Florida State to line up against anybody at this point, given this year. 
it's just this year. It's not about you yeah. know Georgia's program and what kind of run they've been on. But if you told me who can I avoid if I have one freebie just to pass, uh, I'll the, avoid Georgia. That's yeah, the whole exercise. Yeah, I'll, I'll avoid Georgia as well. Like you don't worry as much, for example, about Ohio State because I think their offense sucks. I, I don't see it. I just don't see it. Now, you put I think Renardo on Harrison, and you'll give up some, but you won't give up a bunch. But you let him follow him across the field. I wouldn't put anybody else on Marvin Harrison Jr., but Renardo. Yeah, and it's not that Ohio State doesn't have good players. They do. I just don't love their quarterback. And they're pretty average on offense so far this year. Now, they, they do play defense, and they will hit you, and they've got plenty of NFL dudes. So that would be, you know, a, a hell of a game. But I, I still like us there. Uh, I think Michigan's better than Ohio State, and I think they'll prove that when they play each other. And so – that game would worry me more than the Ohio State game. But we match up better against Michigan's offense with in theory. With Daryl coming back, it changes things yeah. because I think that kind of dominant 6'5", 340 presence in the interior changes how you play Michigan's run and gives you a chance to make them have to beat you doing something they don't want to have to do. Um, it would be a good game. Again, I hope we're having these conversations. I look to have these conversations about matchups and areas of strength and weakness. Let's hope we're having that. Just got to take care of business. Hour number two, forthcoming stay with Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio and War Chant TV. Financial co host of Cover Your Assets here on Real Talk 93.3. Since three of the largest bank failures in U.S. history last March, the SP 500 is up over 10% as DC politicians added an additional $1.5 trillion in spending after raising the debt ceiling. This rally has been extremely narrow as a handful of mega cap stocks are responsible for over 70% of the gain on the SP 500 year to date. The yield on the 10 year treasury has been below the three month rate for over 200 trading days the longest streak in six decades. As one economist quipped, ignore these signals at your own risk. Managing downside risk is one of the biggest challenges that you will face in retirement. But a clearly defined risk management protocol can help to mitigate large drawdowns in your retirement nest egg. If you're concerned about where all of this might be headed, give me a call at 850-900-5200 and schedule an office visit to discover the risk in your current portfolio. Investment advisory services offered through Trek Financial LLC, an SEC registered investment advisor. Someone who thought texting was a better idea than stopping for a traffic light slams into your rear bumper. Now your back is injured and you've got to be at work and rehab all without a car. I'm Jimmy Facing at Facing Brooks. We hear stories like this every day. You shouldn't pay for someone else's mistake. Call us at 850-777-7777 and we'll make sure you come back stronger. The leaves are starting to fall. The temperatures will start to fall. And the prices are falling right now at Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas. Incredible dealer discounts up to $5,000 are available on all hot spring spas. The industry leader in hot tubs and spas. If you've never experienced the sensation and relaxation of having your own hot tub in your backyard on a cool evening, you're truly missing out. The cold months are coming, and now's the time to set yourself up for the best winter season you've ever had. Plus, you'll gain the added health benefits of reduced stress relief of sore muscles and better sleep you'll feel so relaxed after a nice soak in your new hot spring spa you'll experience some of the best sleep of your life head over to pinch and penny pools and spas on greer road and check out their huge showroom packed with the best selection of hot tubs and spas available and ask about getting up to five thousand dollars in discount low interest financing and a free accessory to make your hot tub dreams come true if you're ready to relax pinch and penny pools and spas is ready to show you how there's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, Happy Hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. 
Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show. Live and local on Real Talk 93.3. WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. The latest betting odds and live movements from Vegas. This is your action update. Now, here are your latest lines from our guys in the desert. NFL football, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers dropped to 3-4, and four, losing at Buffalo last night by a 24-18 score. Looking at the odds to win the NFC South, the Falcons are the favorite. They pay out at minus 105 to win the division. The Saints now have the second-best odds at plus 175. Then you have the Buccaneers at plus 420, and the Panthers are paying out at plus 5,500. NFL football coming up on Sunday. The 5-2 and two Miami Dolphins play host to the 2-5 and five Patriots. Miami a 9.5 point favorite over under at 47. And the Jaguars are in Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Jacksonville favored by 2.5, the over under at 41. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley. This has been your action update on Tallahassee's Real Talk station. Real Talk 93.3. It's Macy's friends and family. Get ready for the holidays with an extra 30% off brands that rarely go on sale with your coupon or Macy's card. And take 15% off fragrance, skincare, makeup, and more great beauty gift ideas. Or shop specials they'll love while supplies last. Now at Macy's. Plus, Macy's Star Rewards members earn on every purchase except gift cards, services, and fees. Savings off regular sale and clearance prices. Exclusions apply. Find something so you at Macy's friends and family. When your people are ready, your business is ready. Cintas makes sure they have what they need to perform their best. Whether it's freshly laundered work apparel for almost any job imaginable, fire protection systems that are tested and inspected, first aid and safety supplies, floor mats, or cleaning tools and restroom products, stocked and ready when you need them. Better work days happen together, so visit Cintas.com. Oh, I'm ready! And get ready for the work day. Man, I just got a text from my wife. She wants me to cook dinner and then snuggle on the couch next to a roaring fire. So what's the problem, Dave? You already got the new grill and you're a great cook. I got one major problem. We don't have a fireplace. Man, that's an easy fix. Just call Hearth and Patio. They got a lot of fireplaces that can help you for your romantic evenings. Wood, gas, electric, and a ton of different sizes, man. Call Hearth and Patio today, 850-727-4282, or visit them online at hearthpatiotallahassee.com. Hearth and Patio, ignite that spark in your life. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark, T-SparkConstruction.com. We conquer all peaks. We fix those darn leaks. Call 850-766-1340. T-Spark Enterprises, roofing and construction services. T-Spark Tease number CCC 1331204. Widden Glass has been taking care of business since 1945. When you call Widden Glass, you're dealing with experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best. Like Widden's top of the line bath enclosures that provide style and luxury at an affordable price. Eye catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden Glass. We'll help you design it and install it. Widden Glass, the first name in glass replacement. Call 222-5781. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1...
they just go hang out with their buddies and he dresses up. I think this year he's got he's a hot dog. Oh, really? Yeah, I think he's nice. just a giant hot dog, which is solid. Uh, I don't even know what Clark is doing. It kind of just like, yeah, it's not as fun as it used to be. I, that's the part you wish you could bottle them up, man. They used to get so excited. One year, Bryce was, or I think Clark was a stormtrooper because everybody's got to be at some point. And, uh, and then Bryce was, uh, I forget that year, but it, it was some sort of demon thing with red eyes that I got him. It was evil. You could hear it breathing. It was cool. And uh, I remember how excited I was because they, they looked the part and they were so pumped. And I remember yeah, that's the best part about Halloween is that you look at all the kids and you remember being that age and thinking this is the coolest thing in the world. I get to go with friends and family and collect candy while being dressed like something that I think is really cool or scary or both. You're not going to beat it. Kids, enjoy your day. It's the best. You oddly look forward to the disgusting smell of a mask. Like those things always were horrible. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But you couldn't wait to put it on. Well, I was Darth Vader twice. And I remember because they the mask got better year over year Yep. Mm -hmm. to where it was almost like the first time. If you go back and look at a picture of me, it's just this plastic, stupid McDonald's thing. It's yeah. ridiculous. But then then it got sophisticated. Oh, I had the full helmet. You had the whole deal. You got the thing from the Star Tours ride in uh, oh, MGM Studios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing was nasty. It was, I think, $60 in those days. Now you can get one where you actually are Darth Vader. You have oh, the, the whole full suit. Yeah, yeah, it's a couple you grand. You, lights. You're the guy, the whole deal. I thought about it about five, six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> thought better of it. Oh, man. Yeah, so I I, I miss the days of uh, getting all geared up for them just to see their faces as they go collect the... Who was the bumblebee? Was that Clark or was he a pumpkin? He like one he of those might have been a pumpkin. He was a yeah, pumpkin. Yeah, he was a pumpkin. Yeah. No, we've had some good ones. <laughs> He was a uh, oh you're thinking of his little outfit when he was baby he had yeah. he did have a bumblebee outfit yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. he did have a bumblebee I don't outfit know that. yeah bumblebee outfit was good player prop dream and then over the weekend the dream is uh, is dead I think I went one and one for the ones I tweeted out but I went one and two truth be told mm. um with the uh, with the bookie uh, on those who didn't hit Drake London uh, Christian Kirk didn't hit uh, by I think four yards. I mean, he was right there the whole day. Just one more pass. Can we stop throwing it to Ingram? Christian Kirk's right there. Can we, what are we doing here? Uh, and then I forget what the other one was. I, I, oh, I got, it was a bust in the first half. If at least you're going to lose it. I'm like, oh, well, my man's going to be out here doing some things today. Okay. They, they found him. Dotson, that's who it was. He, he torched me. Oh, you played the under. I played under 34 and a half, and I think he had 23 on the first play of the game. Oh, I was like, yeah, right. okay, we got a problem. That's the end of that. <laughs> got a problem. It didn't matter for me, but uh, I had Jonathan Taylor. I drafted him late just because of, you know, the PUP. He's mm. going to come back and play. Yeah, yeah. He had 60 yards on the first drive. He finished under 100. Come on, man. Oh, man. 60 all purpose come yards on. on the first drive. He had 97 for the hurt game. your feelings. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. Five and five, I think, for Redemption Thursday wagers. Just a nothing weekend. Just didn't. It gets hard to win now, though. This is the time yeah. of year where Vegas figured out who everybody is. Vegas has got a good handle on what that team is and what that team is. And their totals are usually pretty spot on, too. But you got to try to win first quarter. You got to win like that. Those are the games you have to win now. The odds are against it. I understand this. I understand completely. But you know, this is a potential doomsday Saturday for the SEC, right? Missouri, yeah, Georgia. It's a, it's a really good, yeah, yeah. And then you got LSU, Alabama. So if Missouri and LSU come away victorious, the SEC's got some real problems on their hands in terms of a playoff candidate. Ole Miss, let's just say they take care of business against Jimbo and Texas A&M. Next week, Ole Miss and Georgia, under this scenario, would be playing an elimination game. For the college football playoff. Isn't because that great? would carry one loss next It'd week. It'd be nice. The odds are against it. Yeah. Georgia's a 15-point favorite. I understand that. But if it were to happen, the SEC next week for the college football playoff selection show could be without a home. <laughs> uh, don't you love it? I do. It's fun to watch. Let's see. Uh, Missouri is, hey, listen, Drinkwitz has done an incredible job. I mean, that's, it's nuts. Their only losses to LSU. Yeah, they're seven and one, and, and they have a, a legit and they have a legit offense. Uh, yeah, they really do. Uh, they <laughs> and their NIL game is through the roof. Yeah, they're doing they're doing some things at Missouri. Good for them. 
Good for them. Well, I think, I mean, look, I think Alabama kind of righted the ship. So we'll see, though, that they, they are beatable. And you better, we're running out of chances for them to, to get beat, though. So this would be a good weekend as any. Alabama right now, according to SP Plus, is a 73% chance of winning the conference. LSU at 21% of the West, I should say. The East is obviously Georgia through the roof, followed by Missouri, followed by Tennessee. Florida's not mentioned. Missouri would be in first place yeah. in the SEC East with a win this, yeah, this they weekend. Would. Yeah, they would. Boy, it'll be like shades of 2013. Remember, in 2013, Auburn beat Missouri in the SEC championship game for the right to play us. Missouri at Georgia this weekend. LSU at Alabama this weekend. The other big games that remain for the SEC. Tennessee at Missouri November the 11th, so the week after this one. Georgia at Tennessee and Texas A&M at LSU if you want to throw that one in there. Jimbo cost me by a half point today uh, or on Saturday night. I did, however, get the under the total, so I split on that particular wager. But um, my man, so hard to watch him sometimes. Anyhow, they were 14 and a half. They won by 13. It's hurtful. Yeah. yeah. So it's what happens. It's what I enjoyed happens. watching the, uh, the slop fest in the 730 window as Chris Fowler was losing his mind with his homerism. Uh, in the second half of Colorado and UCLA and how Colorado was the beneficiary of four turnovers. Well, UCLA kept turning the ball goal. over inside the 10. It was like, <laughs> what are you doing guys? They needed seven turnovers to win that football game. I think maybe eight. Uh, they, they would have had to play for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Although was, I will, um, I will say the uh, targeting penalty is not targeting on Sanders. I got to just stop with the nonsense. Do you see what I posted yesterday? I may have the NFL, the Steelers Jags. Oh, stuffing. I did. Yes. Yeah. Go, go if you haven't seen that, folks, go watch that. I posted that. It's on my Twitter feed. I, I I got off the couch. I got so angry. I don't even care about those two teams. You know I don't. I was actually rooting for Jacksonville to win the game. I'm sitting there watching that, and I'm like, well, that is how you teach somebody to tackle. That is exactly what you would tell them to do. That thing right there. He could have blown him up. In fact, if I let the tape roll a little bit more, you'll see that Trevor Lawrence appreciates what that kid did. He gets up and pats him on the ass to say, thank you for not blowing me up. He could have, he could have decapitated him. He could have done anything he wanted. He doesn't hit his knees. He doesn't hit his head. He form tackles, wraps, lowers the shoulder into the midsection. You teach tackling that way. It's they got to stop uh, the Sanders one. It's unfortunate for the kid. He's leading with the shoulder. He hits in the right area. The problem is the head's attached to the shoulder and he hits the kid under the chin. I know what he's trying to do. Yes. There's no such thing as targeting. Just get rid of the rule. The there's optics no such of it thing. is you've got the crown of a helmet hitting a chin and you're screwed. You're screwed. You're screwed. But that's that we know that's not the intent. They have ruined this thing. I'm telling you, I said it from day one. I was the loudest one to say it. I'm at least locally. I, there is no such thing. People do not target. It doesn't happen. It's not a real thing. Stop doing that. Stop kicking people out of games. If you want to throw a penalty for, if, if you launched above the shoulders, there are moments when you can say, all right, look, yeah, there was a, we got to get game this, this year. Yeah. yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah. Where we say, you got to get that out of the game. Okay. I'll grant you that. That's not, that has always been a penalty, by the way. And leading with the crown of your helmet has always been a penalty. It's been in the play. It's been in the rules since going back to the fifties and sixties. That that has always been a penalty. What they call now is what I'm saying doesn't exist. Like this nonsense. Like go down. If if somebody could just stand on a field and stand down on the field and watch how fast the game is played in college and pro football, like to see, like be down there and watch how quickly plays begin and end and how violently fast it is, you'd see that nobody has time. Nobody has time to think about, I'm going to target this guy. Nobody does. Nobody does. It's about angles. And you can, and that's the other part about this, is that most of the time, there's an implied sense that a person is, is attempting to injure or attempting to do this. They're not. They're not. That, that's the only reason that you would throw somebody out of the game is that you believe they are. Well, and, and it's like you believe that uh, every defender is uh, force sensitive for you Star, Star Wars people out there. That they can tell the future. Right. Because they know exactly where the offensive player is going to go. Like everybody <laughs> assumes that the defender has this split second ability to adjust their you, body. But 
the receiver, the quarterback, the running back can make any movement. They don't know where that player and is. And they going. often do. Obviously, low man wins in football. You're yeah. taught that from the day you start playing the game. So everybody's in a battle to A, get to where they need to be, try to beat you to a spot. Okay. So we're it's the math we're doing here. I'm trying to get to this spot based on what I have assessed in real time your speed to be and your size and everything else. And if I'm able to get to that spot before you, now I've got to get lower than you and you want to get lower than me. So you can truck me. I don't want to get trucked. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to cross paths with our heads lowered and we're going to hit. And that's why you have a damn helmet on. That's why we're talking about officiating every week. I was nervous in the second half. I think it was, I know running backs and, and running plays have less protections than receivers and quarterbacks, but we wallop somebody at the line of scrimmage and it looked like it would have crossed that threshold upon review. And I was stunned that they oh, did not stop I said, the snap, game. Uh, yes, I was yelling, snap, 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 snap. And we ball. didn't. We took our sweet time. I'm like, yep. snap the ball, snap it, mm-hmm. snap it. They're going to screw us. It was deep in their own territory. See, but this gets back to, and this is less of a conversation about complaining about specific calls that go against us or just, specific gripes about officials that's just going to happen every week yeah that's way. just Can, it's yeah every just, week we're, we're well, in for 40 yards we're in the acc man it's what it's what it is it has been for a very long time like i've noticed a discernible difference between the way games are called in the sec and games are called in the acc we've talked about that a lot but as it pertains to florida state how much easier of a cover is it on saturday rather oh, than course. sweating bullets if not for always that always it, it drives me nuts but we just get back to again the intent and the spirit of these rules you have to stop your officials from incessantly seeking penalties instead of witnessing one and calling it. That's a reaction to a penalty. It's not, I'm looking for one, but they, I'm telling you, they're looking. It's crazy. It's like, it's like they don't want you to be able to play the game. They want to put their hands all over the game. Stop. That's not the mentality. You should want to go unnoticed. The best officiated games are the ones where you never, ever think about an official. Afterwards, you're like, you know what? I don't, I don't even think I yelled at the official once today. That, that day, that crew did a great job. A great, not because your team didn't get screwed, but because they didn't insert themselves into the game. It's. No, oh, they let them play in the first quarter on Saturday. It's and just, then magically, well, you get closer to halftime. Maybe the score is getting more lopsided at that time. I don't know. I'm not going to question and impugn their integrity. But I will say that the moment it started to approach a, a three, four score margin, my God, the yellow flags came out left and right. The um, the Keon Coleman push off, man, when he's getting bear hugged. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. on the heels of the Roddick hold, which um, not since the ponder throw against USF in 2009, Ooh, which is a great throw. Have I seen a rollout where there really is. I, there wasn't an angle. There's no angle that shows that's a hold. No. The kid throws his arms up in the air, which doesn't work for us against Duke, by the way. Right. Doesn't work. Right. Doesn't work. But it worked in that moment because you have a Kentron amazing play on the yep. other side of it. Head tops him. It was shades of, uh, I know it's a different circumstance, a little bit the way that he caught it, but it reminded me of Kenny Shaw against Boston College 10 years ago. It's a rollout to the right. It's the same sideline, and it's it good. feels like a low percentage moment. It's a good throw. And it's a really good throw. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's a good throw. That was back-to-back plays. The Kentron play and, and the pass interference of which you speak. The uh, Kentron play, I'm like, okay, guys. You got my man bear hugging him. He's going to extend his arm. But in, in fairness to that official, what he probably saw was just the arm extension, not what came before it. That's, that's where his fault is, though. Yeah, you need yeah. to understand. Like, you know it and I know it. it if you are both engaged... Yeah. And you haven't thrown a flag by the time that both players are engaged. You cannot throw a flag for the disengagement. You can't. Your choice was to either there's an infraction as they both decide to lock each other up, or there isn't. From that point on, they've got to separate themselves, and you've got to let you got to be okay with that. Yeah, I got. I just I uh, wish I didn't have a weekend where I, that's something that comes up. Like I'm, I was less furious about our game. They there were some egregious moments in that third quarter, but I okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it wasn't, it, we've seen way worse, but the, yeah, in the NFL, it happened again yesterday. And that's why I just, I'm, you got to stop guys. The quarterback's a football player. And most of these quarterbacks, you'll notice lots of them, lots of them know that it's nonsense and they want to be treated like football players. It's interesting to watch uh, and listen to all the former quarterbacks who nine times out of 10 will be like, yeah, that's not, 
that's not roughing. That's a good hit right there. You know, those would be the guys to be most sensitive about it, and they're not. Low key, one of the most important plays that Jordan Travis made Saturday was the second drive, the first run. It's a read option. He runs left, and he's being horse collared for four steps. And he's got the strength to not allow that to collapse him and mm-hmm. suffer an Achilles injury. The kid is two hands holding on to him yeah. and dragging. And he's riding him for th- three to four <laughs> steps. <laughs> Now, we would care an awful lot about that missed horse collar if you've got a ruptured Achilles and yeah. the kid's out for the season. But sure, sure, in the second half, we'll have two horse collars go quite the other way. By the way, the, the uh, WWE body slamming was ruthless. It, it was. It was but good football. It's good If football, you're going to yeah. mesh for six seconds, these, yeah. are the, these are the things that you have to oh, live Oh, no, with, I laughed pal. about it. I laughed about it. I was like, ooh. And I knew they were going to throw the flag. And they didn't even know why they threw it. They're like, I don't know what to do. I'm going to call it a horse collar. Okay. <laughs> I got to call something. Surely, with the way they want us to throw flags now, that has to be something, right? Slammed him on his head. Nick O'Leary should have been suspended after the Louisville game in uh, 14. That should, that should have been a suspension. <laughs> well, the Clemson game, too. Oh, well, yeah, that's just that's just ruthless yeah. and unnecessary. Wait till they start calling that yeah, flag. Yeah, yeah. Greg Jones on Sean Taylor. Right. Wait till they start throwing flags unnecessary on the running back. Unnecessary, guys. For the longest time, by the way, the only offensive player to get an unsportsmanlike conduct after uh, uh, for an offensive player was Larry Zonka for the Dolphins. Got one for stiff arming a guy out of bounds and just about took his head off. He was just too too mean, too strong. <laughs> they called it. They're like, that's unnecessary. For years, that was a trivia question. I'm sure it's with the way that they over officiate things now. That's not the case anymore. You can get a flag for almost anything. But yeah, Larry Zonka was the first to get one where an offensive player got called for unnecessary roughness for a stiff arm. If they apply that logic now, Derek Henry would be in jail. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jeff Cameron, Show 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Someone who thought texting was a better idea than stopping for a traffic light slams into your rear bumper. Now your back is injured and you've got to be at work and rehab all without a car. I'm Dana Brooks of Basic Brooks Law Offices, and we hear stories like this every day. You shouldn't pay for someone else's mistake. Call us at 850-777-7777 and we'll make sure you come back stronger. This is Patty Wilson. Oh, I'm sorry. We're ready. <laughs> He's recording. I, why are you always saying your last name? It's I Patty and Scott. Everybody I knows know that. Patty and Scott. I don't know. This is Patty Wilson. No, this is. I am Patty Wilson. <laughs> What is the idea behind said promo? It's for Patty's Playhouse. We're on Patty's Playhouse Saturdays at 11. Tune in. That's stupid. Just tune in. Saturdays at 11. Patty Wilson, Patty's Playhouse. House talk with a happy ending. Each and every time. (laughs) People who suffer from arthritis are getting real pain relief with exciting biologic therapies at QC Kinetics. The success rate is there, and there's no better way to treat yourself when it comes to dealing with pain. Meet Tyler Vale, co-founder of QC Kinetics, who says they can't cure arthritis, but they can treat the pain. If you think of the tide coming in and out on the beach and what it does, it erodes the sand, right? can't stop the tide, but eventually when the sand or the beach gets bad enough, we backfill that beach with sand so that we get generations of enjoyment with that beach again. And the same thing happens with your knee or your shoulder or your hip or your back. We want to backfill the problems that have happened to this point. I'm not stopping the tide, so I'm not stopping the arthritis, but I want to get generations of enjoyment out of those joints again. Call QC Kinetics now for your free consultation. Learn more about how restorative biologic therapies can get you real and lasting joint pain relief. Call QC Kinetics, 850-391-4280. That's 850-391-4280. 850-391-4280. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, call Select Quote at 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Or go to SelectQuote.com. 1 800 452 5050. That's 1 800 452 5050. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Details on example rate at selectquote.com. The Jeff Cameron Show brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. college football are the turnarounds where you know programs we were one of them just recently after five and seven campaign going 10 and three and coming out of the wilderness getting talked about in a different way obviously that was very rewarding for us but that goes on in college football all the time where you start to see hey this coach's impact is happening you can see it it's playing out on the field or in a negative way where you say, yeah, that coach has always been a bad coach. And now they're playing like they're coached poorly. So big surprise. But uh, you, you do that all the time. And uh, Nebraska's got a very good chance to go to a bowl, buddy. That's uh, Colorado's best win. As it turns out. Uh, they have, And by the way, uh, they're, they have an outside chance of winning the Big Ten West. Oh, look out. <laughs> Matt Rule, year one, buddy. God, that conference still with divisions. Yeah. You have got to be kidding me. How is it that Michigan back-to-back -back years gets two months of preseason football? It feels that way, doesn't it? Man. But, you know, I, br I brought it up earlier. There are two in the ACC, three in the ACC, that you would go, job well done. Virginia Tech, for starters, Tom's favorite team, is you know i mean obviously they they have a shot um they were one and three they're now four and four and you know they're not, they're, they're not going to but they could go to a bowl certainly boston college from one and three 96th sp plus when we played them by the way and i remember that they've won four in a row there they are and then i would say the other one is georgia tech and georgia tech is the football equivalent to being schizophrenic. So they have recent wins over Miami and North Carolina. Georgia Tech does. They have losses to Bowling Green and Boston College by a combined 26 points. They're four and four. It it's, uh, <laughs> makes you at least think a little bit about next year's opening game in Ireland. That was a laugher. Now it's a, hey, guys, let's make sure that yeah, uh, we're buttoned up, ready to play. Brock Glenn is ready to go. <laughs> Although Tate continues to look good in limited reps. He did. Yeah, he did. Um, You know, uh, by the way, we knew this would happen. That's why you let the games play out and you don't get all in your feelings and get upset and things like that afterwards, uh, after one win, like the, the first game of the year, like Colorado had against TCU. They've uh, lost four in their last five games, and uh, they will probably be multiple score underdogs in each of their last four games. So thanks for playing. You're done. Also, South Carolina. The Shane Beamer heiress 
Coming to an end quick, Tom. Mm. It's looking it's looking ugly. Special teams cannot save this beamer. This is not looking good. Go through the uh the numbers of those that are in contention right now for the Heisman. And very quietly, we've touched on this last week. Jordan Travis kind of moved up the ladder here. Now, I don't think he's going to win the Heisman. But really, what an honor it would be for him to go to New York. And that is still in the realm of possibility. Because you're seeing Washington's offense struggle now. And Oklahoma just lost. So Dylan Gabriel, who a lot of people had ahead, that that's a tough one. I mean, I know he doesn't play defense, but you just got to kind of try to slide ahead of a couple of guys, whether that's J.J. McCarthy or... You know, Michael Penix Jr., if they continue to struggle on offense, no, for example. No touchdowns on offense against Arizona State. Yeah, there's a couple. Jordan has not had a clunker in the realm of that. No. And yet, there's Penix, and everybody's top three. Yeah. Now, Penix has been really good. Uh, that game aside, he's been really, really good. But it's the equivalent of Florida State not scoring an offensive touchdown against Boston College. And yeah. that game being in Tallahassee, that was a home game. Yeah, it'd be weird. Come on now. It'd be weird. Um, the guy you got to worry about if you're Jaden Daniels or anybody else on this list is the Ollie Gordon kid at Oklahoma State. Have you looked at what this kid's been doing? No. Well, sweet Jesus, buddy. Oklahoma State somehow, after that South Alabama loss, just can't lose. My man had 25 carries for 271 yards and two touchdowns, and he's been doing that on the regular. He's getting compared to Barry Sanders. This is nuts. Wow. Go look at his well, numbers. I was going to say, we're going to bring up the Stanford receiver, who if he doesn't get hurt on Saturday, he would have gone for another 200 yards. Yeah. he's, he's what? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> thebattlesend.com, yeah, guys. Come on down, buddy. Come on down. Irashafel is set to join us, and he joins us right now, as you want to do on Mondays. That's always a good thing. Hello, Ira. How are you, brother? I'm great, Jeff. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. So, did you get to did you get to bathe in it? Did you wash yourself in the feelings and the sights and the sounds of the hill? I saw the post game rap. I'm just kind of curious. Did you did you let it linger? Because who knows if you're ever going back? Probably not as much as I should have. You know, I, you know, I, looking back on it, when we were done with the rap, I probably should have just sat down on the hill. Yes, and just kind of really reflected on all our trips there, but. Uh, I also was thinking, well, you know what? I got to drive back to Tallahassee. So <laughs> I just got to hook it back up to the press box. It was still, uh, you know what would have been funny, Ira, because the game was over at halftime. If you and Corey had gone down and recorded it on the hill at halftime and got an early start back to Tallahassee, <laughs> you could have <laughs> been like, guys, this game is over. We're going to do the rap from the hill with the fans around us, and we're going to hit the road because this one is gone. I actually did say to, to Corey in the second half that uh, I should have covered the fourth quarter from the student section, mm. which had like three people left in it for the second half, <laughs> and and just like gone down there and talked to them. Like, why are you still here? Like, all your friends left. Why are you guys still here? That is the new loyal, loyal fans. Yeah. No, that was uh, okay. So, by the way, I know you you spoke on this, but let's hear it again. I'm curious. Was it really 50-50? It looked it on television to me. It looked like 50% Garnet in the stands. It easily could have been. It's hard to tell on the side underneath the press box. Um, it's hard to see all of that. But the side that was where the Florida State fans were sitting, I mean, they were 80% of that side of the stadium. Um, I just don't know the exact numbers of how many were on, on the press box side of the stadium. But it was probably close to it. Um, it was uh, it was impressive, man. Like, it, and everywhere I went, like I, I was down underneath the stadium when I went to go uh, talk call you guys to the pregame show. I was underneath the stadium, and I heard some Wake Forest employees like commenting to each other, like, "What's the deal with all this garnet?" <laughs> like, they, they were. It was like they, they they had been invaded. They didn't understand what was going on. It was. Uh, and then the other lady said, "Well, it is Florida State. Mm, so, yeah, it, it's uh, a real program, hun." <laughs> That's it's what you could have said as you walked past, but it's like, uh, yeah, I would have given it to the hun, uh, but 22 for 35 for 359 yards, three touchdowns. You had the 29 yards rushing and a touchdown. Jordan Travis was simply fantastic. I thought it was his best game of the year. Top to bottom. I thought he was fantastic. He made uh, a few NFL throws. The best throw of the year was the throw to Morlock. Um, that I could watch that over and over and over again. It's, uh, it's, it's just a perfect throw. 
uh, he that was what we were hoping to see every week, and that was something to behold. And if he's going to play anywhere close to that level moving forward, Florida State's going to be a hard team to beat because he gets out of the pocket, kind of offsets some of the weakness of the offensive line, and then obviously he's diagnosing really well right now, processing really well right now. And that from a technique standpoint, I thought that this was the best he looked, setting his feet and throwing the football. I, I, I agree with you. I mean, I thought, uh, in fact, I almost asked Norvell a couple times about how well he played in this game, which kind of implies that he hasn't been playing well, and he has been playing well. Right. I just thought that this was almost like to a different level. This was, uh, yes. Yeah, and uh, I also thought, you know, I liked the way he handled, you know, there were some situations like the, you know, the interception, or the, the pass that could have been intercepted early in the game. It looked like when Keon slipped, um, you know, Keon, Keon slipped a couple times in the grass. A couple of the guys did, and that led to some of those issues. I think there was also a couple other routes where receivers weren't exactly, maybe didn't see it exactly the way, same way he saw it. Mm-hmm. It looked like he made errant throws. Um, and I was just impressed that he never seemed to let that bother him. They had a, they had one uh, one or two possessions that ended with two or three straight completions, two or three straight incompletions. And, uh, you know, again, it never seemed to bother him. He came back out and and threw extremely well. So I just think, you know, we're continuing. It, it's it's funny, like, in one regard, he's played a ton of football, but in another regard, I think because the way the, the offense has really evolved with him actually doing dropbacks and reading the whole field and all that, it's almost like we're seeing him grow still from week to week, even though he's already played a ton of football. Yeah, that was encouraging. I, I really thought he was in total command, and to go in there and do that without three of your receivers, um, and one of whom is a, a bona fide stud, so the other two are, are important, but obviously no Johnny Wilson, and it, really they didn't miss a beat. That was what was fun. And uh, By the way, also, I don't know if you could tell from the press box, but they gave a ground uh, on field end zone perspective. I don't know if you've had a chance to go back and look at it of the Benson catch and run the, the screen pass for 80. That is a scary, scary force of nature coming at you. If you see it from that vantage point, could you deduce from the press box that that man was running at speeds that should be illegal for someone his size? You know, I didn't see it. I haven't seen that angle yet. I did want to go back and watch some of the game, but I haven't seen that part yet. But uh, Do yourself a yeah. favor and do it, Ira. It's incredible. Well, no, and, yeah, seeing it from above, you we had a pretty pretty good feeling early on. It, this, this may go the distance. Um, but, yeah, man, it's, uh, it's, it, is, it is otherworldly. And, and it's one of those things that you could kind of like, you know, it's just we've come to expect it. But I think I wrote a story about it just because it, it isn't normal. I mean, he's the first player in school history to have an 80-yard pass reception and an 80-yard run, and he also has uh, an 80-plus-yard kickoff return. Yeah, against Boston College, yeah. So, I mean, it's just, uh, you again, it's stuff you would not expect from somebody, like you said, of that body type. Yeah, it's 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 pretty scary, um, and it's, it's a lot of fun. How'd they come out health-wise? Everybody all right? Uh, I think they did. I, I'm trying to think back to the game itself. I don't really remember a lot of guys having injuries. Um, uh, so I, I think they did. And uh, Norvell said that uh, Johnny Wilson was able to practice some this weekend, I guess, last night. So that's a positive. We'll see if he's available this week. He didn't sound super uh, optimistic about Hakeem Williams or Destin Hill. But, um, you know, we'll see. I mean, maybe they'll get one of those guys back as well. But, you know, again, this is this week is very much a get through it week against Pitt because, you know, obviously the big game is a week later. Yeah, I would imagine if they have to, they'll hold everybody out that they need to. Uh, Renato Green was one I did want to ask you about, if he is all right. Uh, you know, I, I don't, haven't heard anything about okay. not being okay. So I, 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 as far as I know he is, but I, I don't know for sure. So from here, it's getting fun, Ira. You know, we plan on warchant.com tomorrow night to have a reaction to the college football playoff committee's rankings. I, I made a case in the first hour. I really scoured numbers today, this morning, and really over the weekend. I looked at everything that advanced metrics can give us. And I, there's no way Florida State will be outside that top four. I would be surprised if they weren't top three, quite frankly. Do you feel as encouraged by that or not? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I think if you're not going into it, I get the preseason poll. I get the AP poll. I get the USA Today poll, coaches poll. I get the idea that they, they're they going to always do a preseason poll, and they're going to continue to kind of follow that lead throughout the course of a season, and then it's all going to work itself out. I get all that. But the whole purpose of not doing the college football playoff rankings 
until this late in the season, right? Is that now you're not you're not relying on your preseason thoughts and your biases from the year before and all that. And if that's true, if that's what they're really going to do, and if they're not going to look at any of that or what happened in the past or previous years, then yeah, man, I think they they could you could argue that they'd be in the top two, um, yeah, at least the top three. Um, if they're fourth or good grief, if there's any way they weren't, but if they're not, fourth, yeah, then it's obvious that they're that they're that they're not doing what they're supposed to do. I don't think there's any way they're not in the top four, but I actually that's the only thing I would say about this silliness that is this spectacle every year i will have a problem if they are not in the top four because now you're having to overcome that bias in a way that you may not be able to and that is nerve-wracking um you know i you good again you go undefeated i think you're in no matter what but you would be a little it'd be disconcerting if you were sitting there at five and washington was ahead of you exactly and the whole idea of well then why are we doing this then why are we why do we wait eight weeks if you're not going to do that because honestly the again the polls they're locked into what they said in the preseason and they're not going to they're not going to change it unless one team is dramatically better or the other the team that's in first looks terrible and they're sneaking by um but the whole idea of this is you're waiting because you want to take an you know an unbiased view of how teams are actually playing and if that's the case then you shouldn't be beholden then it, it should be a case where anybody could be number one. It doesn't have to be Georgia because they're two, two right. times defending national champions. But my feeling is it's probably going to be Georgia's one, and I feel like Michigan's probably going to be two. And then, you know, we'll see. We'll see what they do with three and four. But uh, I, I'm with you 100%. I think you, you definitely make a case that Florida State uh, should be at least number three. Brother, it's always good to talk to you. I'll talk to you again tomorrow. Be good. Thanks, Jeff. See yep. You. Irish Chaffel, I, You know, the problem you have is, okay, I can look at strength of schedule. And if I do look at strength of schedule, I think Michigan has to be in a weird way on the outside looking in. No, that would be the first place you go if you're trying to argue Florida State to be number two or number one in the country. You yeah, Ohio State has the highest strength of schedule of the group we're talking about. Florida State's number two after that. Um, if you wanted to do this the right way, you would say, if that's how you were going to base it, then you'd say, well, Michigan's five. Yeah, correct. They're not even in the top four. Yeah, you combine strength of schedule with the efficiency and balance of both sides of the football. Florida State is the top two team in the country. It's, it's an ironclad argument just about. Now, the lone thing I would say is, again, they don't just use strength of schedule. They do watch the games, allegedly. And in that way, I would tell you that I've watched Michigan's play every one of their games. I've seen every one of their games. And I think they're legitimately very good. Like, I know their schedule's ass, but they have crushed the teams they've played. Those games have not – they haven't had a hiccup. There hasn't been any moment where you're like, oh, what is going on here? Then none of them. I mean, it's been over by halftime. They've just boat raced people. So I think they are very good. But they're going to have an opportunity to prove that later on. They've got a couple of better games in terms of stature that if they win, they'll kick down the door. Yeah. So you could say as a committee, well – be damned. I think they may be the best team in the country, but I'm not put in there because I haven't played anybody. And yeah, my eyes tell me they're really good, but they've got two games coming up that will tell us whether or not they're as good as I think they are. So I'll just wait. Yeah. If you put them at one or two, then the eye test outweighs all of the other things you're supposed that's to consider. That's exactly right. That's what, that's what you would have to argue. It's the only thing you could argue. Yeah, no, exactly. Now last year they had a similar schedule that was just so sorry. It, it was terrible. But they stomp the hell out of Ohio State and Columbus, and that ends all arguments. Uh, and at that yeah. point, you say, well, never mind, never mind. You earned it. You are where you need to be, and, and that's in the playoff. But this year, we're not there yet. We're not at that point. They don't have their Ohio State moment. So I agree. They should probably be four or five, but they're more than likely going to end up at one or two tomorrow. So for, if you're Michigan, look, this is, this is how it works for you. Uh, if you. If you put them, if you're the committee, you put them at five based on their schedule currently. And then you say, okay, well, they've got at Penn State November the 11th. And I don't think Penn State's any good, but they'll probably beat Penn State. And then November 25th, they've got Ohio State. They win those two games convincingly. They win those two games. They're undefeated. Yeah, they're in. It's as simple as that. We're done talking here. Florida State wins out. They're in. What gets interesting is if, well, not even then. If Washington can keep winning, they'll get in too because right. Ohio State at that point would have yeah. a loss. and that would Oklahoma be did us a favor this weekend. Oh, they did, buddy. And as much as I have affinity for 
Oklahoma. I was happy to see him lose. Down at, at the end yeah. of the game, at the end of the game, I was pulling for Kansas because I want fewer obstacles. I keep talking about it every week on this show. Which of the teams want to nominate themselves for taking it on down the road? And Oklahoma nominated themselves this weekend and take it on down the road. They must. I think it would have been patently absurd to put them ahead of Florida State if both teams were 13-0 and in conference champions. But the committee we might have, have done to, it. We don't have to worry about it anymore. Correct. And the committee might have done it. But now, that's not, a, that's not a universe we live in. Avoid the scenario by which, however, there are three or four teams trying to get in to the fourth spot and all of whom have a loss. That yeah. is to say, if Florida State is to suffer a loss because we're screwed in the ACC championship game, that's going to be a bum. That's going to be a bum. No, you need to root like hell for Louisville you so that they Louisville, carry 13 yes. into yeah. that weekend and right. you can lie to yourselves. Yes, that, you are 100% correct. But I don't think Louisville's going to win. <laughs> so it's like, I'm gonna be like, man. I will tell you this. I was worried we were going to have to face Drake May because I think he's a hell of a quarterback. But Mac Brown did us, what he, well, did us a favor and does what he does. Even if he got there, his head coach would have limited him in some way. It would have been, it would have been silly. Yeah, their defense has stopped making stops, too. There's Oh, there's a stat line for you. I wanted to bring this up because this is just straight up funny. Um, for that game, by the way, Georgia Tech 46, North Carolina 42. Uh, here it was. Is it the 600 yards that Georgia Tech amassed? No, this is even better. So North Carolina, who twice had double-digit leads in this game, uh, in the fourth quarter gave up to Georgia Tech 22 points. Okay. You say, well, that's terrible. Yeah, it is. In the fourth quarter, they gave up 246 yards. The hell are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are we, what uh, that's are we pretty doing? much a thousand yard pace what are we doing out here <laughs> north carolina holy jesus how much did wake have all afternoon against us 210 i think it was 210 <laughs> yeah oh and I'll, and I'll do this for people who missed the first hour and i know we gotta take a break but this is crazy again here it is here's the number when i was going back through i knew their success rate was terrible and i went and looked at third down and all that they were 18 percent, which is just embarrassing but Wake Forest ran the ball 44 of their 65 scrimmage plays. Of the 44 rushes, 41 of them went for two yards or less. Uh, that is staggering. That's hard to do if you're playing a high school team. Kid makes you miss. Can't <laughs> stop me like that. Come on, man. What are we doing out here? That is. They have to feel like babies, little children. Little infants, little toddlers, just getting tossed around, being abused. It's awful. It's like a a little guy I saw at the corner pocket not that long ago. Probably that's probably a mile, more like five, six years ago now. Who was told to leave and he would not leave. And then he got picked up. And yeah. so the guy who removed him warned him that I'm just going to carry you out of here. Yeah, he goes, "No, you're you, not." You. And well, the hell he, he was. Yeah. And it's, put me down. <laughs> put me down. He's swinging his arms violently. Sir, you're a grown man being escorted out by another grown man. It's, yes. Against your will, and there's nothing you can do about that it. That manager bouncer corner pocket was Florida State. Yes. That little man was, was Wake Forest. Forest. Oh, my Put goodness. me down. Goodness. And what a great game Jared Verse had. I forgot to mention him earlier, not because of the sacks. The sacks, the two sacks, great, good. That's byproduct of how hard he played and how dominant he was. He was awesome against the run. He was awesome, period. This was a, a game where he was a he was wreaking havoc in every aspect of the game. Go back and watch that again, guys. Jared Verse was a grown ass man on Saturday, amongst many, but he was the emblematic of the 41 rushes for less than two yards that Wake had. Can you imagine standing on a sideline, Tom, calling that play? Yeah, less than two yards again. Mm. Try it again, Johnny. Let's see if we can get uh, three on this one. No, I know that everybody loves a good video game analogy. That would be like when you wanted to start Army, right, mm -hmm. and uh, improve yeah. their program in the dynasty. Always. But you scheduled Alabama for the first game of the season <laughs> yeah, in yeah. NCAA 12. Yeah, and you're just taking a beating. It's going to be third and 12. Yep. No matter how you shake it. But, you know, that game always ended with the announcers saying, boy, Army hung in there. Coach Cameron's got something going in the right direction there. They lose by 21 today, but they were right there. 31 <laughs> to 10. 
<laughs> Thank goodness it's five minute quarters. Oh, uh, Jeff Cameron, show 93.3 Real Talk Radio War Chat TV. Your local news now. A shooting took place early Friday morning, leaving two men with gunshot wounds. Officers were in the area when they heard the gunshots coming from the 1800 block of Mill Street. The crowd was located, attempting to disperse from the event. Officers discovered a man with a gunshot wound to his wrist. A second man was discovered with a gunshot wound to his ankle. Their injuries were both non-life-threatening, and both victims were taken to a local hospital for treatment. It is unclear if the victims were the target of the shooting, and no arrests have been made. This is an active and ongoing investigation. A fire broke out. Saturday afternoon at a hurricane debris site in Jefferson County. Jefferson County Fire Rescue posted pictures to their Facebook of the fire that was reported at the Goldberg location. It is believed an ember from the fire pit ignited a 40,000 yard pile of debris. It was determined they would contain it with fire breaks and extinguish only what had spread beyond the pile. A fire watch has been established to monitor the situation. This is Rachel and A with your Real Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems, Tallahassee's go to Mac store. Check them out online at MacklemoreSystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Lots of sunshine this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 85. Winds out of the north, 5 to 10 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows dip down to about 59. Highs level off around 76 tomorrow. A blend of clouds and sun. Dry with temps well below average Wednesday and Thursday. And highs from the low 60s to the upper 60s. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 82. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. So everybody knows, Eddie, that you are a spectacular cook. Of course they know that. If they go into Bumpa's, the food is always good. I mean, mm -hmm. everything on the menu. Mm -hmm. Everything at Gordo's is delicious. I always, of course, get the what, the bungalow chungla, as I call it. The bungalow chung, Jeff. Is that the, what, what is the pork? The bungalow chung, oh, Jeff. Okay, the bungalow chungla. It's delicious. All these things, all the items, yes. everything you do, a, a master cook. But, sir, I would ask you, what is a skill that you possess that you're particularly proud of that nobody would know and that uh, that you could share with us here. Growing hair, Jeff. Growing hair. You're an asshole. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. I did. I did. I just gotten done with the post game show. And so I was able to watch most of the fourth quarter. So I remember thinking in overtime, uh, if Virginia has to kick a field goal, they're going to lose this game. And I was say, don't do this. Don't kick the field goal. Yeah. Go for it. They kicked the field goal and they lost the game. Well, how about Mario kneeling the ball with timeouts, 20 plus seconds to go, puts a knee on the ground. He's that done it more kid, than once. That kid will make a 65 yarder. The uh -oh. Bor Borgales is unbelievable. And, of course, he drilled the 48-yard or whatever it was. Yeah, it's, you know, 45. I kid is unbelievable. They got us. They, they've got their version of Roberto Aguayo and whoever else you want to. Yeah. He's got a stronger leg than Bertha. Oh, but that, yes, that he is, does. That's a cannon. And oh, you're not going to give that. So you won't kneel against Georgia Tech, but you will then with timeouts to get to the. All you got to do is get to the logo, and you've got a fair chance to walk it off. No, it's nuts. Three of Miami's last four games have gone down to the final play. The last two have been in overtime. Yeah, it's unfortunate that that kid is that good. 
It's it, it pisses me off actually when he lines up. You're like, well, this is right down the heart. Florida State thirty eight, Miami nine. <laughs> And he's going to make a 60 yarder, right? He'll make oh, a, yeah, he'll make like a 57 yarder right before the half. And you're 67. Like, Are you kidding me with this kid? Yeah, 67 before half. Yeah, he's a weapon. We'll be up 24 to three, and all everybody's going to talk about is the 67 yarder. I'll tell you what, I, um, I do feel good about one thing. I have a friend who's still alive in a survivor pool, and he's like, okay. I've used, you know, the Eagles. I've used the Dolphins. That's too I've, much pressure. He's asking pre- you? Yeah, he calls me. He goes, no. okay, all right, here are my choices. I can go Chargers over the Bears, which in retrospect was a good pick, but we didn't go that route. He's like, where would you go? And I said, you offered counsel? Oh, God. Well, he wanted to know. He asked me. I would say, I'll offer you counsel if I get to buy into this thing, but I'm not going to be the reason that you alone lose Well, money. ultimately, he has to make the decision. I mean, my goodness, I, he's just calling for advice. He knows I'm a gambler. He wants to know what would I do. He's like, would you go Lions over Raiders, which is tonight's game? And I said, well, I'd like to save the Lions. Um, I, you know, there are other games I like more. He was like, such as, and I said, Ravens. And when it was seven to nothing, Arizona, I was like, oh, this is not going to, I'm saying this is not going to happen. If you've got strong feelings, you have to fire over a waiver that our friendship cannot end for this conversation, man. I need you to sign that. Yeah. Not e-signature. I need you to sign that, notarize it, send it back. But I I did. I I told him to take the Ravens and we won. We're good. We're all set. Now, you know, that's just, that's a survivor pool. That's not against the number because they lost the, the bet against the number in weird ass fashion. That has to be a nightmare. Ooh. The Ravens were killing the Cardinals. They give up a touchdown, an onside kick, uh, then, then a field goal and an onside kick. Like you're sitting there going, this cannot be happening. I'm sure he was sweating. If you like pure chaos, pure gambling, like betting on a coin flip. How about doing an NFL well, survivor I, pool against uh, the spread? You know, I'll bet on a, on a coin flip. I've done it. I you it was not you, but I have seen a four figure coin flip. Yeah. It's really entertaining. <laughs> good work out of you. Uh good work, Director Matthew. Be well, everybody. Have a good night. We'll talk to you soon. Peace.